I was always interested in drawing right from elementary school. Uh, the kids were always getting me to draw them horses and things. And yeah, I just always had an interest in it. And uh, both my parents were artists. Like they recognized how, how important it was. And so they were always very encouraging. It kind of is my voice, I guess. I think everyone has an artist inside them. It just needs to be developed. And if you can go to art school, great. But I didn't get a chance to do that, but it just worked out for me anyway. If I didn't have a creative outlet, I would, I don't know what I would do. I don't know. <laughs> it's never happened, so I've always been creating something. It makes me really unhappy if I can't paint for a period of time. If I get a block of time off, I'm I'm there every day and I can I can do a painting in two weeks, probably to a month. Because I like to work on big paintings, not so much the smaller ones, so it takes a while. Yeah, I have tried oils a bit, but I just haven't got into them, but I would like to try again. I'm kind of impatient, so I like to get going, and I think you have to wait for the oil paint to dry so before you can work on it. That's why I like acrylics. Probably within the last year, I started working with resin, and it's a bit toxic and messy. <laughs> well, yeah, you're not really controlling the paint, it's doing what it wants, but yeah, the results can be pretty phenomenal. And I did a little work with resin and gold pans and, you know, that sort of look, because I like that sort of thing. I try for realism, but I don't like to be so realistic. I like to have a touch of abstract in my works as well. So, more interesting, I think. The city, while well, working for the city has helped me because uh, they've involved me in some of the mural projects in town. So, that's been huge for me. I did that big caribou one on Front Street. I have always been interested in the history of our area. And uh, we do a lot of road trips and stuff around in the back roads. and. I'll see stuff always just, you know, stop, we got to get a picture. That's, I just bring it back to the studio and uh, try to capture what I've seen. The lighting or like an old building or wildlife. I like the stories of the gold miners and the things that they went through back then, just making the road into Barkerville and, you know, there's probably a million stories out there we'll never know. I got the scholarship, a full scholarship for the Tony Only project out there and I was staying out there for nine days and uh, that was part of my project, that painting. I don't know where the name idea came from, but during the project I took a picture of all the names on the plaque and then uh, proceeded to fill them all in. I was just tweaking the painting a little bit and I just set it back to look at it just to see where I was at and I could see this figure like he I think he'd walked in front of my camera when I took the picture. That's how I feel. Like I could see his outline and I'll, I just embellished his hat and some of his facial features and his hair just so other people could see him. But yeah, he just appeared in the painting. Yeah, there is a story behind every painting pretty much. So this is on the backside when you're going up to Yanks Peak, but it's very rugged and we went up there on quads and I was afraid of rolling my quad several times, so that's why I call it Death Roll Cabin. But it's just a little cabin that uh, nature is reclaiming. It's pretty sad for future generations, so it's nice to capture them a little bit. That's uh, called Blue Morning. Sunset Theater is up here, and this is just down the back alley from there in Wells. And I just came across this scene. Everything was sort of blue, the hills and the house and the truck and uh, I took a master class with Robert Bateman in 2019 and he critiqued this painting and uh, he said it reminded him of the style of Andrew Wyeth. Actually these two paintings were my submission for the 2019 uh, Ski to Salmon Art Festival. They both got accepted into the show and uh, we went up there. It was a lot. There was a lot of art and a lot of people and a lot of artists. It was great to meet them all. And uh, yeah, this one won the People's Choice Award, so I was pretty proud of that. Where I work, there's a lot of crows and ravens, especially the ravens. Like all winter, they'll come and talk to us. And I don't know, they're just like little personalities. Like I love all birds, but these guys are something special. Like my friend Floki there, he, he has a lot of different calls and like he's trying to speak 
to you to communicate, but he'll come and he'll land on the box of the truck and there's a sliding back window and I'll just open the, open the window and he'll just hop right up and actually sit on the back of the seat in the cab of the truck and look at everything and pull my hair and, you know, poke at this and that. It's pretty cute. So one day I noticed there was a polyphemus moth that had just, you know, came out of the cocoon. His, his little wings were tiny. And so I watched this all day long. The wings got bigger and bigger and developed and he just finally took his first flight and uh, Kook swooped in and nabbed him right out of the air. So ate him up. Yeah, <laughs> they are very smart. This thing that we've started up here, Spirit Square Studios, it's like a collective and we all, we're like a little family up here. I went down to the coast to meet a sister that I've never met and she's a part of the Parker Street Salon and there's over 200 artists with studios in this giant old warehouse. And I, I thought, wow, we got to do this in Quenelle. And it just sort of uh, manifested, right? There's three painters and uh, one girl is kind of a mixed media girl. And then there's the lash artist at the end of the hallway. <laughs> she does lashes, but yeah, she's a, like an artist at it. And we have a couple of photographers in here now, so it's a great little space. Yes, this was for our first show we did up here at uh, Spirit Square Studios. And uh, the show was called Transformations. And it was just how society has had to transform itself because of this COVID. The petals sort of represent the COVID virus. And this is the new look of society. Yeah, this is actually is a statue in a cemetery. So it kind of represents some of the people that have passed as well from the COVID. When uh, we had a couple shows and there was some artists that came and they would show me their work on their phone. And I'm like, well, we're having another show. And, uh, but they're, they're, they're like, I can't do it. I just can't show them my stuff yet. I'm, it's not good enough or too shy. You gotta push past that embarrassment or lack of confidence. And uh, you just need someone to give you a hand up, I think. Just don't ever get discouraged or don't let anyone discourage you. Uh, if your art is your voice, you have to stick with it. Yeah, I hope to like develop this place a little more. But yeah, I can see like teaching classes and just painting for my remaining years. I have a lot of paintings to paint still. So.